Hey beautiful people, I'm going to try to get through this. I've been trying to make this video for over a year and it's so emotional that I haven't been able to even find the ability to turn it on and try to talk. So first I want to show you this. You know what it is? It's Plant Wave. If you don't know what Plant Wave is, go look it up. And I'm going to be leaving soon for Europe to film a documentary. And when I'm there, the Amanita are going to be fruiting. We're going to listen to what they have to say. I'm very excited about it. Let's talk about sentience of fungi. Before I made this channel, before I used an Amanita, before I used a mushroom at all, I would not have believed that. If you know me and my work now, you know that I absolutely do. So much so that my website is amanitadreamer.net and .com, right? My other website for my private patron community and my store is called Mushroom Voice for a reason. So I'm going to talk to you about the concept of panspermia. I'm going to talk to you about my experiences with the Mushroom Voice and an experience with a photograph when I was sitting on this very deck, suicidal, planning to take my life the next day. And, and out of the blue, I was looking right out there. That's a bunch of woods. <laughs> out of the blue, it was almost like I was possessed because it felt like it came from inside of me. But it also, I knew very well it, it wasn't. But the voice said, you know, if you're gonna be leaving the planet, you should go walk and see the planet you're leaving. Just go take a walk. And I was like, okay. I mean, it can't hurt. I'll go walking out there. We'll go see. But also, it, it, it wasn't just a thing here. It was this, something was pulling me from in here, like this yearning, like a siren song, you know, when you hear about that, like it felt like it was pulling me, these voices, this, this idea. It was light and wispy and airy and beautiful and calming, very matter of fact and peaceful. I did not have to think about it. The minute, it was like it lifted me up. It, it was seconds when I heard it and I got up and I walked right down those stairs right there. Just do, 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 do. just walked right back into this woods. And I took a that way and I went walking in that direction and just bam, there it was. This bright orange, yellow mushroom. And I was like, oh my God, I said out loud, what the fuck is that? And that was my very first experience with the mushroom voice. And I know now that that's what it was because after I took it and you know my story, and if you don't, you can look it up. It's here on the channel it's, and it's on amityadreamer.net. That next day, the voice was singing through my whole body and it was that same voice. And that very day they started on with me about you have to tell the others. You have to tell the other people. You have to tell the other people. It was the same voice. I have another video about why I started this channel where I pick up that story from there. If you want to see that, I won't go back over that here. And they never let up. Since then, I'm in an amazingly beautiful position as Amanita Dreamer that people come to me from all over the world by the thousands. I've got thousands of people's encounters and stories of this mushroom. And probably the most common thing that I know that I hear and that people say is I hear the mushroom calling me. It's why I started looking you up. I've been dreaming about a red mushroom and so I Googled it and I found it what it was called and then I found you and I've never used it. I don't even know where to find it. Or I used it once and now this voice is on board and it won't go away. And how can a mushroom 
talk to me or call me when I've never even, do you think they're sentient? Do you think they're alive? Like this is in the thousands of people. And then if you talk to the psilocybin people, like it's the same thing. And that led me down that whole rabbit hole of, okay. <laughs> different animals experience the world differently. They have different senses than we do. And if you've watched um, Fantastic Fungi, then you know about how trees communicate and that it's just a completely different set of senses and perceptions and ways of communicating. And so it would be very species centric for us to think that sound is the only way to communicate, that picking up thoughts as energy or even through chemicals that we may not be aware of that we are translating into thought, that these are different ways of perceiving and communicating. I know many of you have animals and you know exactly what they're thinking and you can get them the things that they need because they just know how to communicate with you very well. If you've ever been a human who gave birth, you know that communication and how that works. I think that there are certain experiences on this planet that when you've had them, then you just know that there's another way to communicate. That's not this or sign language or this. I believe fully well that fungi they've been here way longer than we have they've had plenty of time to perfect that we know from that movie uh, fantastic fungi how they communicate with the plants so why would they not have an effective way to communicate with us also you've seen my videos where i talk about what the mushrooms want us to know from one of my very early trips that i did on camera it was bizarre to me it made me cry how important it was, what they had to say. I said it on camera because I knew I was gonna never upload that. I was just gonna edit that out. I did go back later and publish that because I grew to understand the truth in it and I quit being ashamed or afraid of knowing that when you are on higher levels of it, they're very loud and clear in messages and information. And if you tripped at all on any mushroom, you also know that experience. But it doesn't go away, at least not with this one, just when you're not on it anymore. It, that, that, that voice doesn't go away, it's always there. And it's not talking all the time. It's just at random points, you, you know there's communication going on. And then there's the download of packets. And you've seen me on some of the European ones that I did on camera. I talk about that, that part of me left, part of me split off and left. And then I would talk about them downloading like information or whatever. And that was two years ago. And to this day, a lot of that stuff is just now making sense to me and I'm unpackaging it. One of them was about the documentary and I'll save that for another video that's just a whole other like, uh, like uh. so considering all of this and learning that these particular mushrooms are over 30,000 years that they've been here when you know their sentience and the way that they work and communicate with the land and with us and when you start thinking about the concept of spam Pan, pan spermia, oh my God, pan spermia, about them coming here sentiently, already arriving sentient here, and their ability to communicate. I want you to go watch, there's a channel here on YouTube called After School, and Jasper from Fungi Academy, he was a guest on there and he did a whole video about it and he does it way better than I could. So I'm not gonna repeat what he said and I am urging you to please go watch that. If I can, I'm gonna put the drop to it, a link to it here. And hey Jasper, <laughs> and watch his, I was on his, uh, a guest speaker at Fungi Academy. Now I cannot put it off any longer. I have to tell you about this picture.
This was the second year that I harvested Amanitas here in Georgia where we have the Amanita persicina. They're that beautiful peachy color, the real Georgia peaches. And I can hear them. I have since. <laughs> okay, so if you watch any of my foraging videos, they are on amanitadreamer.net because they got me, they got a strike here on YouTube and got me locked out of my channel. So they took that down. So all my foraging videos, I used to get a lot of comments and hate here on YouTube because I would get so excited and squeal and get giddy and just talking to them and having these conversations while I'm harvesting. All kinds of, oh my God, you're nuts, you're crazy. Why are you getting like that? It's just a mushroom. And then now also hundreds of people apologizing or saying, oh my God, I get it. I get it. I found my first salmon. I get it. Like they're, it's like they make you crazy. They make you excited. There's this connection. There's this remembering. It's like coming home. It's like seeing your relatives after a, a whole lifetime of not being around. It's like a homecoming, like a reunion and it's exciting. And I'm like, I know, oh my God, it's hard to describe. And they talk, I can hear them. And they, they all have different personalities that are inhabiting that fruiting body. And some want to go and some don't. And so I hear them, they, they'll go, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll leave you in the ground. And then some are going, me, me. And the feeling that I get from them and what they tell me is that they know their destiny and they're very proud and honored that their entire reason for being born was to be picked and to be used by the humans and to help educate and be on this channel is just a service unlike any other and this rare opportunity in the history of humans and this mushroom together there's never been an opportunity like this to be on camera to be on video like none of their ancestors ever were and the importance of the work that we're doing here. They know they've been chosen. And when I foraged the ones in Vancouver, Canada, that video is also on amanitadreamer.net. That was insane, the thousands of Amanita there were. And they were so happy they had been waiting for me. And the ones that got picked to go, it, it's over, overwhelming. When I picked those that were in that photograph. I had more, I picked a lot. And I was getting ready to do like a bunch of them all set up for that photo. And so I'm sort of going over all of them and they're popping up going, me, me, I wanna be in it, I wanna be in it. So I'm grabbing all the ones that have said they wanna be in the photo. I know I sound like a crazy person and I'm like really okay with that because if you don't know, that's fine. But one day you will. <laughs> and then it'll all make sense. If you know, please make a comment. So it was actually right here. See those vertical, those, that was sitting there. It was a water fountain and the pump had broken and it had all these little shelves that I put my rocks and gemstones and crystals on because they were really pretty and they were still there. And so I just wanted to set the mushrooms up on those shelves and all around those crystals. I just thought it made a really nice backdrop. And they were beaming with honor and reverence and excitement and feeling grateful and lucky and proud. And they just knew the importance of this photo and of this moment and of their destiny and of what they're doing and that they were gonna be just going all out around the world because they were gonna be going in the products they make and getting shipped off around the world. And that they, this was their launching, like this was their getting ready. And they knew that after this photo, they were all gonna be going into the dehydrator where they would slowly go quiet and then get shipped out everywhere. And there was excitement as I'm setting them and then one is rolling and rolling and I'm having to work harder to get it set where it goes. And then one is saying over there, over there, because these two are like trying to talk to each other and then I'll put them near each other. And I got everything all set up the way that you see in this photo. And as I grabbed the camera and I walked back and I squatted down and I looked through it, the noise and the chatter stopped and they all focused forward in silence and reverence and honor 
and they got very serious and proud and pushed an amount of love that I don't have English words to express. And I just started taking pictures and they sat there silently. This is our moment. And the honor in it. And I was so proud for them and honored to be witness to this moment for them. And when I took the last one, they immediately started talking again, just like they were before. The, the chatter and the noise and the, the beauty. And, and I left them to talk. And I said, I tell you what, guys, I'll leave y'all overnight. Enjoy the moon. And we'll put you in the dehydrator tomorrow. And they were like, okay. And I came in the next, out here the next morning. And they were still at it, just... And I just sat and cried again, like, oh my God, I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is happening. It took me two years to make this video, to say this to you, because I know how I look and how I sound. I'm very well aware of how this sounds. And all I can say is, if you don't know, you don't know, and that's okay, and I get it. But I know who I am. And I know that it was very hard to say this publicly. I'm still on my own path of wrapping my brain around the level of sentience of mushrooms of the entire fungi kingdom and their abilities and how they communicate across space and time through space and time with space and time with us across realities i knew finally and permanently that fungi were sentient when i went to that very ancient sacred site in Canada and I have a whole video on it that will just it'll get you it is on my website on the events page because it talks about ceremony I was not on Amanita when I went there and it was so overwhelming and loud if you sleep in the same room with them dehydrating Wow if you're handling them like I show you in all of my foraging videos, processing and handling and storing, all of that and how that feels and, and how that gets through your skin and that, all of this is communication. All of it are all these different ways to communicate with all of the different ways that it is existing and is conscious. And they have taught me about time and manipulating time and manifesting, which is, a, you know, touchy word but it isn't what you think I've got a whole series on all this stuff they taught me what our power was our inherent power how to use these meat sacks as machines to move through this life and and move things at will and and use time and use the mushroom and use force and thought and energy and focus and communication to just shift and wield the world It's a beautiful life when we return back to our fungal family, but they also open the world to all of the animals that are sentient, to all of the plants that are sentient, to having relationships with your tree family. And that's like another whole video. You can get involved in my trip to Europe by becoming a member of my patron and jumping in on all the zooms I'm going to be doing from all around Europe. I want to bring you with me and be like, look, there's the Eiffel Tower. Look, this is Iceland. Like, there's the Swiss Alps. You know, like, I want to do this with you guys. It's mushroomvoice.com. My store is not open in September. It's open in August, but I'll be in Europe. And then when I get back, it'll open again in October. But if you can't afford to do any of those things, 
just buy me a coffee. I need the caffeine. I need the money. I gotta eat. I'm not getting paid to do the documentary. I'm paying my way. And it costs money to support all these websites, especially AmityDreamer.net, to bring completely uncensored, highly educational, expert videos about the Amanita mushroom to you, my friends. Cheers. I love you, beautiful people. May the spores be with you. <laughs>